Hey everybody, Kenny Jr. here. Welcome back to Stick to Games. On today's special episode, Stick to Games Express, I'm going to be taking a quick look as we make a revisit to Sonic Adventure Battle 2 at something that Jun Sinoue has to offer us once more. This time we're going to be looking at his track from Metal Harbor, which is called That's the Way I Like It. What I wanted to note about that drum part was the drummer's use of cymbals. Now, if you just listen through it a couple of times, you may get the impression that, well, maybe they're just using the cymbals kind of whenever they want. But I would actually argue that every single cymbal stroke that is used serves a very specific function. So the question to ask here, is there a such thing as too much cymbal? Let's take it to the set and find out. Right in the very beginning, we have a crash cymbal that gets things started. And once we make that repeat, it marks off the start or finish of a section. Now, from that point forward, we can see that our hi-hat is closed with the exception of 9 going in the 10 and then again for 11 going back to the start of this section. We have the hi-hat that opens and it kind of chains with the next one. So in this particular section, chaining those cymbal sounds dictate either the repeat of this section or the beginning of the next section. In the next section, the first interesting use of cymbals starts at measures 12, and it uses a quick catch hi-hat to bring out the rhythm guitar part in the music. We'll see this same kind of usage with the crash cymbal in measure 18, where it plays on the offbeats, which goes alongside the horns. In this section, we can also observe that the crash yet again dictates the change or the repeat of the section, specifically in measures 14 and 16. And of course that fill at the end is nothing to worry about. It's simply crash, pineapple, apple, apple. So after you make your repeat and you return to this point in the song, you'll move on to the final section, which is the point of the song where it gets the most intense. Now we're gonna see the crash symbol play a more active role and just coming in on some down beats. So we're gonna play through this with the open hi-hat. We're gonna practice those hi-hat catches towards the end of this particular section. And then after that, we should be just about ready to run it top down. Now, one final note I'll add here is that in the extended version of the song, they actually play through that final part a third time, but in the third run through of this, the drummer actually uses his cymbals even more, but it does still serve a function. And I believe that function is to further amplify the intensity and the finality of this last section of the song. So we're gonna try to run this top down and we're gonna have a lot of fun with our cymbals. So let's give it a try.
All right, everybody, and that just about does it for us here today. Thanks for tuning in. So I sure hope by this point you are able to figure out that symbols can have more than a function and just use on the fills and to just use to, you know, signal in a section. You know, symbols can send all sorts of messages depending on its context. So is there ever a time to use too much symbols? Probably not, but it all depends on the music. So I hope you guys can go and like the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media. And if you ever wanna see me do a specific composition from a different game, feel free to leave a comment or message me and I'll be happy to do a lesson on it. And lastly, I hope you guys remember to do everything that you can to gain an entry to enter my giveaway. I can't wait to find out who the winner will be. Keep checking back for updates. Till next time.